Well, hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Renee and I know I said I was all done doing freezer meals for a while. However, when the opportunity arises, you can't pass it up. <laughs> so I've got a, uh, uh, just a boatload of beautiful, huge potatoes. I got like 16 pounds of them and um, they're left over because we did uh, scalloped and cheesy potatoes for church. So my husband always, always says he covers his rear end and he gets extra. So he got me two extra eight pound bags. I'll never use these before they, they start going bad. So what we're gonna do with these is we're gonna do some um, twice baked potatoes and we're gonna do we're going to do cheesy scalloped potatoes, and if we have enough, we're going to do the old-fashioned scalloped potatoes. So this is just going to be for all our potatoes for the freezer. And I also have some extra that I'm working on for hash browns. I'm cooking them, so they'll be good, too. Now, the hash browns I'm making, I'm cooking them, but not completely through. And uh, I'm just going to lay those on here. See, nice, beautiful size. And those are just going to go in the freezer just that way. So let me get some more going on here. And we'll get to doing the uh, other potatoes. You probably can't very well see me, but I'm just doing just a couple of good handfuls. And then I just shape them a little bit and I leave them. It's on really low, so they're not going to burn. They're just going to get nice and golden brown. And they're going to pretty much cook through. Maybe not all the way through, but when I do put them in the oven to reheat them, they'll, uh, they will finish cooking if they're not done already. Okay, now I'm going to put a little pepper and salt on these. There you go. That's what I got to do, too. Okay. Okay, so those are gone. And those are just going to sit there and cook. I'll, I'll work on those as we're doing all this other. Um, first thing first is I want to move this aside. I'm not going to cut these with my knife i'm going to use the mandolin i love that thing but the first thing is i want to put these baked potatoes in for our twice baked potatoes so i'm going to bake them at 400. okay now with these i'm going to use six of them and i like to take and uh Put a little uh, olive oil on these rub them with a little olive oil and then put a little salt on them and you know then it makes that skin nice because we're going to keep that skin so these will be beautiful i'll poke them with a fork in just a second we need a little more I'm just going to use my knife right here. You just give these a little poke. You don't have to get wild and poke them all over and make them holy, holy. You just give them a, one little slice is all they need for the steam to escape. And people will say, oh, they explode. I've done it before both ways. I've never had a potato explode, you know. It just, they get done. All right, and we're just going to put a little salt on these. And that'd be good. All right, now I know the oven's not preheated, and I don't care. It's okay. I'm just going to put these right in there. Okay, now i got to get some hot soapy water in my sink. Wipe things down, because I have to clean as I go. Get some 
beautiful day out. It's just as you can't. It looks like it's bright as can be. It's all snow. Yes, we got more snow, and this is the craziest weather because next week it's supposed to be, you know, 38, 41. It's supposed to be quite warm, and that's just crazy right here. I'm telling you. Okay, I'll get hot soapy water in my sink. I do want to wipe off my counter over there as well as my oil bottle. Okay, that's good. These are doing okay. I don't want to turn my overhead light on because it affects the the light. Well, maybe not. And I just leave those. They're nowhere near done here. So those are on low. And those are going to cook for quite a while. And that's fine. I just do it in between. Okay? Beautiful. Okay, so before I start cutting into the potatoes, because I'm making a lot of them, so I don't want them to turn, you know, to start oxidizing on us and turn brown. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn this burner on. I'll get the right one this time. <laughs> I'm still not used to the stove. There we go. We got that on. I'm gonna do one half cup of butter and a half cup of flour and four cups of milk. And that's gonna be our um, roux, a part of our, our roux, actually, bechamel. When it, once it, it gets cheese added to it, it'll be bechamel. But that'll be our sauce for our potatoes. We're gonna let that melt. Okay, now that that's melted, I'm gonna add my one half cup of flour because you always want equal parts of flour and butter. So. There goes my flour. And we're just gonna cook this for a few minutes to get the flour taste out of it. You can make this as light or as dark as you want. And uh, I like mine kind of in, in between, but I definitely want my flour cooked. I don't like the flour taste. And if I am, am working with anything that needs to be thickened that I can't cook the flour, then in, instead of flour, I'll use cornstarch. All right, I think that's good. That's cooked enough. We're gonna go ahead and start pouring this milk in here. And I'm gonna use four cups. My grandma used to make this, just like this, nothing else added to it but a few spices, and she'd call it poor man's gravy. Ah, little did she know poor man's gravy was, was the beginning of a expensive dish. Yeah, poor man's gravy. Make that over potatoes, I can't tell you how many times. All right, we're gonna put a little bit of garlic and onion powder and parsley. About a half a teaspoon of each. I'm not using too much. We're gonna do a little salt. A little bit of pepper, and you could use white pepper if you want. It's going into my potatoes, so it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me anyway. And a little bit of parsley we're putting in there just for color. We're just going to get this mixed and thickened. And this will be wonderful. And I'm not doing any cheese with this. I'm going to layer my cheese in with my potatoes and my onions. And then I just pour this over the top. Easy as can be. And it'll thicken as it, you know, as it starts to, to boil, it'll really start to get thick. It's already starting to thicken up now. And that is nice. We're going to give that a little taste. Oh, that coats that spoon nicely. Okay. I think I can safely shut that off. It does need a little more salt. I got her in the potatoes a little salt too. Ah! It's got enough garlic. It's got enough onion powder. 
Look how thick and beautiful that is. Gorgeous. Okay, now I'm going to rinse my spoon and taste it again. We'll see if I can do it. This. Here we go. That's perfect. Absolutely. That is so good. Okay, that's all set. Now, I went ahead and I sprayed... I need this. I don't need that. I went ahead and I sprayed my pan, too. And I'm using a nice big pan because I'll use this when... Um, my family comes, you know, let me get my cheese. You know what? I also found that under my cheese, it was hiding. I'm going to chop that up. We're going to chop this up first. Let me set this aside. I've got lots of onions in my fridge from the onions that I cut the last time. So I'm going to use those up before I cut into the red ones. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to chop this up. These are supposed to be easy open. Remember, I took this out of the freezer a while ago. Not a while ago, probably last week. And I haven't used it. So I'm not going to use it. We'll use both of them. Why not? You might all think I'm finicky, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm always scared of my little grandkids choking on the skin on these. So I peel this skin right off. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Oh, this might be the skinless. This is. I bet this is. Let me look at my package. I tossed it out. Yes. Ha! It's the skinless. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I'm just going to take, and I'm going to cut this in little bitty chunks. And we'll just leave it on this board because we'll put it right in there as we go. Oh, I like the idea of skinless. I don't know if you've ever had a child choke on something, but it scares the hell out of you. Awful, awful. So there we go. only takes a second. I gotta keep an eye on my my last one is in here. Okay, I need a little bit of oil. And it just drizzles out of there. Ah! Alright. We'll get going with this. So this will become Instead of cheesy scallop potatoes, it will become cheesy sausage and scallop potatoes. Ha! That's all right. It works. This, this is a meal. You wouldn't have to have anything else with it then. Because you've got your meat right there. Okay, so. What are the rest of this? Let me move this aside. I'm going to cut up. A bunch of potatoes to start with and I'm cutting mine real thin real thin and these go fast on this mandolin but be careful because boy oh boy is it sharp and you can almost see through them. they're that thin okay and I don't peel them. I don't peel them because I'm lazy I don't want to peel all these potatoes I'll peel two or three of them but that no Peel them real thin, or uh, slice them real thin. Beautiful. And they slice up fast too, well, I don't need that yet. I'll get these all sliced. My onions are already sliced. All right, we'll start with this. And then I think we'll probably have to do more, but it'll be all right to start with. I'm gonna bring you right up here. You probably won't see me, but you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna layer these. And I just, Cause they're so big, you know, the little ones I'll just fling in there, but these ones are so big. I'll just layer them and 
these are small little just throw them in these are big and beautiful let me get some more down in here we're just going to layer these all over the bottom pretty good okay now I'm gonna put salt on these but very little all right so here we go we're gonna do some of these last few red onions in here and these are also really thin I sliced them on the mandolin too so we're just gonna put those around now, I can use these and I don't have to just use them in moderation. I can use these. We love onions. Mr. Wayne can eat these really nice. So there we go. That's a good bunch of onions right there. And we're going to do some of that sausage right there. Beautiful, friends. Look at that. All right. Let me get this open. put some cheese right in here too okay now we're going to go at it again and remember I'm going to put my sauce over the top and then it'll go into all the nooks and crannies and it'll fill everything in and here and be wonderful okay so this is what we're going to do just keep right on layering it and you don't have to layer it. You can throw them in there. Just make sure they're fairly even in your layers, you know. See these little ones I just toss in here anywhere, I guess. I like like a couple layers worth of potatoes. That way you get lots of potatoes in here and they're wonderful. Okay, I've got to flip my potato hash brown. All right, I want a couple of them over here. I'm gonna build up that edge. Okay. Now I got a few white onions in here. I'm only doing just a few of those. That's it. I can't do too many of those ones. These are going to be wonderful. Okay, we got enough to do one more layer of these beautiful potatoes. I'm going to use the rest of these in here. Because they're small, I need to build up that side right there. The little tapes. Okay. There we go. That's good. Okay. 
Okay, that's what I'm doing there. Now, this pan is very heavy. So I'm going to move all this aside because we still got room to make more. Okay. Let me get this mixed up a little bit. Beautiful. This is going to be wonderful. We're just going to put this all in here because we use every bit of it. Oh, I can't hold it up no more. That thing is heavy. Okay, now this, we don't have to worry about it. It's not going to sit right on the top here. This, All this is going to soak right down into every nook and cranny, and it's just going to be a pan full of deliciousness. And I want to scrape what's left in here. And I love cooking with my cast iron pans, but man, are they heavy. So I'm just going to scrape this down where I can easily get a hold of it before I lift it. There we go. All right, we got that. Now, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to put some cheese on top. Beautiful, look at that. Okay, I'm going to have to make a tent for this. So that's what I'm going to do. our little tent right here or we're gonna put two of them together I call it a tent ha! whatever you want to call it okay we're just gonna cover this up just like so This is going to go in the oven at 400 degrees. I'm going to bake this for an hour to an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 15 minutes in between there. I'm not going to completely cook this. This is going to go into the freezer. So once it's cooled, it will. I'll wrap it in plastic wrap as well, label it, and put it in my freezer. So that when you take it out of your freezer, all you have to do is turn your oven on to 400. You can put it in there from frozen or you can thaw it out in your fridge overnight. It doesn't matter. If you put it in from frozen, it's going to take another two to two and a half hours to cook. If you thaw it out overnight, you're going to cook this for about another hour to an hour and a half. So it would be a total of three hours cooking time or frozen would be almost four or five, four, four and a half hours of cooking time. So this is going to go in and we're going to work on the next one. Okay, we're going to put this on this tray just in case it leaks over. I don't want to open it up. Okay, that's good. I'm going to set a timer for an hour and 15 minutes and take that out of there. Okay, friends, let me shut this off. I've got the second one ready to put together and there is the sauce for it. It's wonderful. Same as the first. So I didn't film it because it's the same thing. This time we're not using the cheese. We're just going to make the old-fashioned scalloped potatoes. 
what I call old fashioned. I know because a lot of people will just layer in the potatoes, the onions, the flour, the spices, and you know, pour milk over it. I just, I love to make the sauce. So that's what we're gonna do. That's what I did. I got my pan sprayed. Now we're gonna do these potatoes. So we got that. My chickens won't eat these. I'm throwing that in the garbage. They'll eat potatoes if they're cooked, but they won't eat them raw. Okay, we're just gonna layer this down in there. And you've seen how I layered it. Same thing with this one. I'm gonna put this together and I'll see you when it's done. And we need more potatoes. Probably just one more. Beautiful. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pour that over there. I didn't salt that because that's got um, the sausage in there and it's a little salty. So I, I only did one layer of salt on the last ones but we're gonna go ahead and this is fairly easy for me to handle so we're just gonna dump this all right in here see how it's going down into all those nooks and crannies that's what you want, and that, my friends, is gorgeous. Oh my god, that's heavy. Okay. Look at that. Okay, so same with this one. It's beautiful. Beautiful is my favorite word. Gorgeous is another. I need an apron that says beautiful and gorgeous. Food, <laughs> not me, food. I cook beautiful and gorgeous. <laughs> I love it. It really doesn't have to be beautiful and gorgeous food as long as it feeds the hungry. But not like my father. Oh my God, my father, you guys, you would have died laughing. My father used to tell us, it doesn't have to taste good. It's just gotta grub you down, okay? All right. But then he'd make you a uh, cream of mushroom pancakes. Yes, I said that right. Cream of mushroom pancakes. with a can of cream of mushroom soup. Ah! My dad would make everything but the kitchen sink soup and I grub you down. All right, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna take those potatoes off that tray. I'm gonna clean up and do a little bit of a reset in my kitchen. I'm going to ultimately get this in the oven and get another timer set for it. 
and then I'll be back and we'll work on those potatoes. Okay, friends. I think these are cool enough to work with. So we're just going to cut these in half. And I'm like, oh, it is a little steaming. We'll find out. You, you want to leave about a quarter of an inch. And these are a little warm yet. I'm going to have to let these cool down just a little bit. Ooh. Yep, those got to cool just a little bit, friends. A little bit more. You know what I'll do? I'll cut them in half. And then they should cool down even faster. They're still pretty hot. And I'll set them on this nice cold hunk of marble. And they'll cool down real quick. Put that in there. All right. Okay, we'll come back when those are cool. Okay, I think these are cool enough to work with now. So you know what I'm gonna do first, I'll take that out of there. I'm gonna put a half a stick of butter down in here because I want that to melt. And I'm also gonna use a half a brick of my cream cheese. I'm leaving the rest out in case I want more. This is gonna go pretty much according to taste. All right, so. We'll get busy with these and get scooping these out. Beautiful, look at that. That turned out perfect. Lay those in there. That's all you're doing. I'm just gonna keep right on and go until I get all these done, friends. Okay, so I've got that. I've got the butter and I got the cream cheese in there. Now we're gonna do a little bit of pepper. And we're gonna do a little bit of salt. Beautiful, because my butter is unsalted too. I'm also gonna do a handful of my freeze-dried chives. Those are wonderful. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start mixing and smashing these together. Now you could use a hand mixer, but I'm just doing it by hand. Okay, I'm gonna put just a little bit of milk in there. It's just too dry. There we go. You can load these right up. You can do the bacon, the, the cheddar cheese, which I do got some cheddar cheese, and then you just put some in. But you can load, fully load them if you want, and then freeze them. I'm just doing this, because that way, you can, uh, when you take them out, you can decide, hmm, maybe I don't want bacon on them. Maybe, I, you know, they're not obligated. If you put bacon on them, you gotta have the bacon. So I just do the cheese and a little bit of chives and the stuff that normally goes on them. All right, and that's nice right there. That's beautiful. Okay, so all we're gonna do with these is we're just gonna fill these back in here. And these are beautiful. And then when you take them and get them in the, well, I gotta make them so they stand there. Then you can put anything else you want on them, cheese, a little bit of bacon, whatever. You're gonna go in the freezer, just like this. And then I'll freeze them individually. Because they're gonna be for John and I, so we don't need to freeze a whole bunch of them. We're each only gonna eat one. Mm -hmm. 
That was a perfect fit. Okay, those are done. Okay, friends. So these are ready for the freezer. These are all done. I'm going to tilt that a little bit if I can so that they're standing up in the freezer. This pan of scalp potatoes is finished. We're gonna, once it cools off, it'll be ready for the freezer. The other one's still got about another hour to go. And then I can get those all cooled off and ready for the freezer. So while that's finishing cooking, I'm gonna get these ones in the freezer because these can go in right now. And I'm gonna give my kitchen a cleanup and then by that time, everything will be done. Okay, friends, I'm gonna show these to you. These, this is the cheesy one, these are cool. See the cheese in there? Beautiful. This one, they're, they're how do you say that properly? They're more done. They're done. They got further done than what I want. But that's all right, because these will just have to go in the oven until they're nice and bubbly and hot. And they won't be overcooked either. So this is cheesy, and I got it right on here. Cheesy. Scalloped. Potatoes. And these ones are going to reheat at 350 degrees until hot and bubbly. Pretty straightforward, hey? And these ones are um, old-fashioned. Scalloped. And then reheat at 350 until hot and bubbly. Perfect. Okay, I will show you these ones. Let me wrap these up. Because I'm going to wrap these really good for the freezer now. One more time. We're gonna go the long way. I know it might seem like a waste of plastic, but really it isn't. We want these wrapped beautifully. Okay, so that one's all set for the freezer. I'm gonna put this aside. I'm gonna open this up and show this one to you. This is the old fashioned one. And look how beautiful those look. That will be gorgeous. And I didn't put butter on the top. I didn't dot either one of these with butter because I got a lot of butter in that sauce. So I, we don't need all that butter. Okay, so this one's ready as well. Let's set this one aside. Plus I've got one small one in the oven for John and I. And it's enough to give us dinner tonight and probably lunch tomorrow. So it'll be good. And in that one, I did a little bit, no onions. I didn't put any onions in there, but I put a little bit of peas and a little bit of sausage. So I doctored it up a little bit so it'd be a good meal, you know. All right, there we go. Okay, friends, big bonus. I just brought these out of the freezer and they're, they're not frozen solid, rock solid, but they're, they're good and cold so I can wrap them. 
and I don't need that much so I'm just gonna cut this right here all right let's see how those do and I'm gonna put these in Ziploc bags that way I can take out however many I want and I better label these real quick Twice baked potatoes. And all I do when I reheat them is I just put them in the oven. You can put them in the microwave if you want, but not yuck let me say that yuck microwave no microwave I'm trying to show those of you who who um, are new to cooking I'm trying to show you how to make meals without using a nasty microwave it's okay to reheat but not these you want to put these in your oven and put a little more, you can put a little um, cheese and, and more chives, fresh chives, bacon. You can put all kinds of goodies you want in there, sauteed onions, whatever you want. Caramelized onions and put them back in the oven with a little cheese on top of them and let them get good and hot. Yum. That's the way to do it. All right, I'm, running, I'm gonna run out of room here, so. I'm going to wrap this one. There we go. Plus the uh, Ziploc bag will help keep them uh, protected from freezer burn as well. This is taking a little more because I've got to cut these. Beautiful. I think I might want to come into I got here. One, two, three. I'm going to put six in each bag. These make a nice side, definitely. You could even. These are so fun. You could even take chili and pour chili over the top of a nice hot chili. Oh, that would be divine, wouldn't it, Papa? Uh-huh. Hi, friends. Last one. All right, now. We can put these. I'm gonna put this away. Okay, we can put these in here. There we go. And those will lay flat in the freezer. I need to fix this one. Because I don't want them on top of each other. They don't have to be that way. Scoop that over. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. There you have it, friends. We did pretty good. We preserved 16 pounds of potatoes <laughs> and made some beautiful freezer meals and beautiful sides with it. And this is perfect for when my family comes because I've got a rather large family. No, they don't all live with us, but they do come to eat. And this will be perfect. So there you have it. I hope you give these recipes a try. I will put um, 
the recipes in the description box below the video. You all have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for hanging out with me in the kitchen. We had a ball and I will see you in the next video. And until then friends, thanks so much for watching.